बंदी उत्कल जननी नमस्कार आपण समस्त भितर ईश्वर को मु प्रणाम करुची डिस्टिंग्विस्ड लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन एस्टीम्ड ऑर्गेनाइजर्स ऑफ द कन्वेंशन एंड ऑल द यंग मेन एंड वीमेन आउट देयर हु आर द सेवियर्स ऑफ दिस प्लैनेट अ वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू 27 इयर्स बैक आई वाज लाइक यू वॉकिंग ड्रीमिंग आई फुल ऑफ ड्रीम्स बट देन वन एक्सीडेंट the rash driving of one person shattered three families we were eight in that car two in the age of 3 and 5 two above 65 two in the age of 21 22 and two in the age of 45 the two who were kids the two who were elderly escaped the two who were middle aged were badly injured and suffered a lot the two who were young one died and i ended on a wheelchair none of the married women had informed their husband that they were going out the three who died instantly were wearing black there are so many questions we have no answers to but there are some questions which baffle me which we must ask why why do we look at a persons with disability in either aversion or fear why do we reject why do we reject a person with disability without getting to know the many talents that they have 27 years back I was doing very well in life two gold medals three topper in exams national young scientist award three times national debating champion national basketball team member qualified the civil services in my first attempt I was looking forward to a wonderful life when this calamity struck overnight society rejected me they wrote on my wall unwanted different disabled you do not belong a lot of humiliation a lot of rejection came my way but thanks to the blessings of god gurus my elders the wonderful support that my parents and my family gave me that here i am today in front of you sharing my journey my uh, my annoyance my anger my sadness my frustration and my achievements in that condition we decided to again go to delhi and face the interview and ask them if i could join the civil services everything was granted i went there the doctors certified that i was eligible to join the job but government rejected me i had a wedding coming up in few weeks it broke down i lost my personal privacy 24 by 7 i was dependent on another person for caregiving even very personal things taking a bath changing clothes or wearing my inner garments and so on after this rejection i share, sta- sat with my father we discussed what is to be done we thought academics would be best for me in this condition i went back to the university same university a topper twice my professors rejected me they said shruti you have bent and curled fingers how are you going to write a phd thank to god there was an angel there in the form of my phd professor and guide dr priyambada mohanty hesmadi who had lived in the west for a long time she said i have seen people in the west doing wonderful things with a disability i will take shruti as my phd candidate the belief of one professor changed my life and i went back to the university all set to become a research scholar 
Little did I know that every day I would face humiliation. I was lifted like a little baby out of the car and put on the wheelchair. And by the time the process was over, there would be 100 to 150 onlookers all gathered around the car and the wheelchair staring at me, some crying, some with pitiful looks, some patting my back. I wanted to run away. But my father said, focus your eyes on your goal. These are all superficial things. Ignore them. I would be sitting in the laboratory and then I would become completely wet. I did not know how to manage. My bladder sometimes was out of control. My bowel movements were out of control. What to do? I told my father, I don't want to go back in this condition. I feel embarrassed. He didn't give up. He said, let's find out ways. My mother started cutting the old towels. She would make thick pads. We did not have diapers then. We would make thick pads and put it under my dress, put it on the wheelchair. So thankfully, even if I leaked, I was wet, it was not visible and I retained my sanity and focused on my work. Days passed by and I cleared my PhD interview and I also won the National Young Scientist Award. A great day of celebration in the family. In fact, every moment, the day I could sit up on the wheelchair, the day I could hold a spoon and eat my food, the day I could hold a comb and brush my hair lightly, everything had been celebrated with in the family as if it was a greatest milestone in my life and living. The phase following my PhD was the most devastating phase in my life when I lost control for some time. College after college, university after university, research institution after research institution rejected me. They took my interview, which I came out with in flying colors. They looked at my degrees, my certificates, my gold medals and were wow, wow. And most in the interview board knew me as a good student, an achiever. But when the results came out, if there was one position, I was second. If there were two, I was third. If there were five, I was sixth. It was then that I realized that I was being discriminated against. My wheelchair now was huge. It was looming large over my achievements, my gold medals, my career. And I simply did not know what to do. And then I told my father, Daddy, I think it is time to commit a suicide. My father looked at me for some time and then said, well, that seems a brilliant idea, but I have some other plans. Let us look at that. And with that, I started tuitions at home. I started teaching students of class 6, class 7, then class 10. I started giving tuitions. Then I started a study circle and I started training aspirants of Indian civil services. And this phase was wonderful. I still remember my father's words when I had told him about the suicide and he told me, look, the people who are rejecting you, the loss is theirs. The loss is not yours. Someday, these will be the people who will call you and they will honor you. He also told me, one day, you are going to be the voice of the voiceless in India. And how prophetic his words were. Today, when the same colleges, universities, organizations, they invite me as a motivational speaker to address 5,000 students, to felicitate me, to speak highly about me, I remember my father's words and how he had given me the mantra of living, yes, I can. Holding on to this mantra of yes, I can, I took one step after the other and today here, I'm right before you. A lot of humiliation, a lot of challenges have come in my life. But I want to share just a few things, a few lessons that I have learned. And I hope these lessons will also be of help to you. Number one, speak up. One day when I went to a public meeting, 
which was being celebrated on the International Day for Persons with Disabilities. I was told by the officers that the program is on the first floor and I will be lifted up on the wheelchair. Not the first floor but in a conference hall where 7 to 8 steps led to the conference hall. I said no, this is my day, why will you lift me? Why did you not think about this uh, building earlier? While we were thus discussing, some of them tried to push me away, push my wheelchair, saying, hey, secretary is here, move, move. I stood my ground and when the secretary came, I remember his name, Mr. Chinmay Basu. I told him, he said, what is the matter? I said, today is International Day for Persons with Disabilities and you want me to be lifted to my program? He looked at me and said, can you give me one hour? After one hour, I came back to a wooden plank, a wooden ramp, the precursor of the great accessible India campaign of today, which is spending crores to make public infrastructure accessible. Number two, hard work is the only shortcut to success. For me, life was challenging, life was difficult because nobody knew about disability. Nobody knew how to accommodate disability. Nobody knew how to work with disability. So I had to be a path breaker, a beginner who had to bring about changes. So naturally the path was challenging. So first I trained myself. The second point I want to emphasize is believe in yourself. Even if the entire earth, even if the entire population comes together to tell you, you cannot do it. If you believe you can do it, the sky is the limit. And when you believe in yourself, dream big. Never big for, dream for small thing, things in life. Dream big because in everybody's well-being, in everybody's growth lies your growth. When everybody is rich, you are rich. When everybody is happy, you are happy. When everybody is healthy, you are healthy. So believe in yourself and dream big and that will lead you to success. Third thing, hard work. And the third mantra I want to leave you with is hard work is the only shortcut to success. To be where I am today, I did a lot of hard work. My dream was every person with disability living in the remotest corner of India should be educated, should live with dignity. For this, I had to prepare myself. I read. I wanted to become computer proficient, but none of the institutions had a seat for me. I bought books from the market, studied and became computer friendly, computer savvy and today the computer is my way to reach out to the entire world. I learned all the laws, I read all the facilities, I compared and every day I read about the latest developments as a result of which whenever anyone calls me I am able to answer them and this has led to a situation where whether people are in the court or they are in the government offices, even the offices, when they want an authentic answer, when they want certain clarifications, even friends from media call me for statistics, for laws, for clauses, because they know this is the person who is going to give us the correct answers and if she doesn't have, she will say no. So hard work is much needed. Only planning and dreaming will not take us much far. So I would like to leave all of you with these thoughts, these mantras. Yes, I can. Dream big. To be happy, give happiness to others. To enjoy, give joy to others. Thank you very much. Bande Utkala Jagannath.